What's up Lotus Breach fans? It's Brian Cook and today we're playing the deck list without Luris because well we're not allowed to. The card was banned. I actually uploaded a YouTube short just a few days ago. You can check that out in the card above where I talk about you know this deck a little bit. So this concept in front of you may look a little bit different. I've actually been working on this for a few weeks. I was waiting to debut it and then Luris was banned and I had to refigure out a few things. So here it is. So this is Lotus Breach after the bans. One of the biggest questions is, is Mishra's Bobble still good enough? I believe the answer is yes. Number one, it fuels Underworld Breach, which is a huge aspect of this deck, and we can still cast our Inquisitions or whatever else, Otherworldly Gaze or, you know, consider on turn one. It doesn't clog our hand. We're able to smoothly cast everything. So that's one of the things I really like about Bobble. With Underworld Breach, it acts as Galvanic Relay, a card that was just banned in Pauper as well, where you can essentially just stack Bobble triggers while escaping multiple times for free. And that's really, really powerful. It's a free storm spell for Grape Shot, but also for Ave out of the post board. So post board, you're, you get more slimes, which I personally really enjoy. It does a lot in this deck. Its interaction with Luris was valuable. I'm not going to pretend that it wasn't, but it's not the end of the world. This card is still good enough in my eyes. And while there's also one other new great thing about it, and that's that it costs zero mana. Why is that important? Because now we are playing Ad Nauseam. We could have played it with Luris, but I've sort of had a realization over the last few weeks. And that was that Wish is probably the worst card in the deck. So if you watch my Pioneer Lotus videos, you'll hear me say that I don't like cards that are only good when you're winning. Well, Wish is a card in this deck that was really only good when you were winning anyway. So I started brainstorming how could I possibly get rid of this card. And I was thinking about my good friend Landon Swartz who sent me a deck list with, and I'm not trying to make fun of Landon here. Landon, I appreciate you, uh, with Spoils of the Vault. And Landon's thought was, you just want the most consistent and fastest deck possible. But Spoils had its own problems with one, killing yourself, and two, exiling your win conditions, things like that. But it was a really good idea that got me thinking. And I began to think about how with Spoils of the Vault, it discourages one ofs, which is really interesting because Wishclaw Talisman encourages one of, so there was some friction there. We didn't really like that. But what's another card that really... Uh, performs well with one ofs. That's Profane Tutor, another card that costs zero. So with Profane Tutor, you can suspend it on turn two, on turn three, play your Wish Claw, and then on your turn four, you untap with Pact and Negation back up for your combo. And that's really interesting to me. So I was thinking, hmm, that's pretty good. Or if you're not facing a blue deck, you can go get Ad Nauseam or the Underworld Breach, whatever you're missing. So, and Profane Tutor, and the, here's the biggest draw to this card in my opinion is that it gets the lotus field this deck doesn't perform well when you don't find lotus field now you have eight demonic tutors for the core piece of your deck and that's really really good to me and you might be thinking well why not run green for sylvan scrying because sylvan scrying doesn't get ad nauseum it doesn't get underworld breach or tome scour it doesn't do a bunch of the things that our deck wants to do so i've been uh playing with profane tutor and it's been really really powerful and cutting wish allows you to play ad nauseum again because when you're playing wish in your deck your overall converted mana cost ends up being a little bit high especially when you're a deck that runs shock lands so I've been playing this, it's been good. My first league admittedly did not go very well, but that was my own fault. So I played a list that had no main deck bounce spell and I was punished multiple times in that league. So I definitely learned my lesson there. Uh, there was also another card that I wasn't playing. I think it was the basic swamp if I remember correctly. And I kept on having to shock myself for watery grave early. And I just realized how valuable the basic swamp ended up being when you have eight when you have 12 actually black cards in your deck. So I ended up really liking the swamp. Um, yeah, so I guess that's the main deck. In the sideboard, we do have Leyline of Sanctity. This was actually a card I was playing with Luris. I was just accepting that Luris was going to be a dead card in post board games against decks like Shadow or Jun. This card has been way overperforming. I played it in Gift Storm, and then I was like, why am I not playing this in Luris? Lotus Breach, that is. And then it's just been so, so, so good. Um, yeah, so here's the nice thing about those decks. It stops Nile Spell Bomb on top of all of their discard. It's just really, really powerful. Uh, they can still use K Command on your Wish Claw Talismans, but they can't target you to discard, which is relevant. I've just really, really enjoyed the Ley Line. Uh, and then we have the Pact Negation still. 
one nice thing is that you can board in Leyline versus a deck like uh, Amulet Titan for Endurance, but they do have Force of Vigor, so I don't know how good that actually is, and people are already boarding in Force of Vigor for Underworld Breach and Wishclaw Talisman. Uh, Void Snare and Echoing Truth, Singleton Bounce Spells. I actually had two Echoing Truth and one Void Snare, and then I was playing this deck in Leagues, and, you know, it just... I wanted two Void Snares. That's pretty much what it came down to because we have this Engineered Explosives to effectively answer multiple permanents or be the more expensive answer, which is what Echoing Truth did. So we have two expensive answers and two cheap answers, three Fatal Push for the Hammer decks, and then Ave is back, Slime Time to get by all of that Graveyard Hate. We have Ad Nauseam as well for that, but sometimes Ad Nauseam isn't what you want in that matchup or you want to board in Leyline of Sanctity plus, you know, a way to beat Graveyard Hate and that would do it with Ave. So to circle back, and I'll admit, I forgot when I mentioned it, so we're coming back to it. My first league didn't go very well. Uh, I believe I went two and three. Not a great record, right? Uh, but I lost a weird thing. So I lost to the same humans player twice because, uh, oh, that's what it was. I didn't have a, so not having the main deck Void Snare meant that I couldn't beat a Meddling Mage, uh, which is just like kind of awkward. And they just happened to name Grape Shot instead of like Wish uh, because they didn't know any better. It happens. And then I lost to Mono White Prison. And by Mono White Prison, I mean like Deafening Silence, Stony Silence, Rest in Peace, Thalia's, like a bunch of stuff that like, you shouldn't be worried about. But I lost three times to that deck and I was like, hmm, maybe I should have a Void Snare. It's pretty free. You can play it over the fourth copy of Consider, which is weird because like Consider went from being this card we were stoked about with the release of, uh, what was it? Midnight Hunt. And now we're down to three because Otherworldly Gaze plus Mishra's Bobble are just more valuable. So I shaved one of those, added in the Void Snare, and since then I've gone 4 1 in back to back leagues. I've only played the three leagues. I have not played since the, L the Lurus ban, but that's what I'm doing here tonight. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, we crush. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Put your questions down below. I do my best to answer them. Let's see how we do. I would love to crush tonight. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in match number one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for a Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Online, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for seven tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us. Just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some magic. Hey there, welcome to the first match and we are on the play. Keep, 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 keep. So we have double Profane Tutor. They don't unsuspend on the same turn, but this hand is still just fine. So we're going to get a watery grave on their end step and cast this otherworldly gaze and then turn to suspend the profane tutor. So this is likely the black white ephemerate deck if I had a guess. All right, let's grab our watery grave down to 17 
and then cast the other whirly gaze. We can definitely bend this. Um, I think they consider sort of free to keep because we're going to cast this gaze at some point. And now we'll just uh, suspend the profane tutor. Pass the turn. Marsh flats. Okay, so it still looks like the ephemerate deck. It could be Esper Reanimator as well, but it looks like the black white ephemerate deck. Marsh flats, sure thing. K3 life, sacrifice this creature, return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it might be Reanimator. All right, so this removes the suspend counter draw. Dream script. It's looking pretty good for us right now. Suspend this Profane Tutor and pass the turn. No point in casting this Otherworldly Gaze because these will unsuspend in our upkeep, so you don't actually get to draw the card, so consider is better here. And it is Esper Reanimator. No creature to discard. Okay. Are you going to attack? They choose not to attack. All right, let's cast this Consider. We don't need that. That can go to the graveyard. Void Snare. So I guess I can bounce this uh, Priest. Yes, let's uh, cast this card and go get our Lotus Field. Okay, so in our upkeep, I can cast the Otherworldly Gaze now, or I can just take a draw. I think I'm going to upkeep cast it. And I hit the Adnaz. Wow. Um, just trying to think about this. So I'm definitely milling the other whirly gaze. If I take the ad nauseum, I float a blue. I'm one mana short. All right, so I think I'm still supposed to draw the ad nauseum. Otherwise, it shuffles away next turn with the uh, the profane tutor. We can just void snare this priest. Play the Lotus Field, sack the two basics, and pass the turn. Next turn, we do have an Ad Nauseum. Three mana. It's a Fairy Time Raveler, so we are no longer uh, getting a Profane Tutor, but that's fine. It, like, honestly, it just doesn't matter. Cannot unsuspend due to the to Fairy, it just stays exiled. But that's delightful. It doesn't matter. We're going to jam here. Okay. So fun fact for you. In my testing games, I had a match where I cast Ad Nauseum. And from 11 life, I drew 19 cards. This deck is very good at casting Ad Nauseum. Hit that three button a whole bunch. In the deck, the most expensive thing other than Ad Nauseum is two mana. So you get to draw quite a few. Three. Um, I mean, I could go down to one here. It's just like, why? I'm sorry. I know I talked it up. We only drew 16 cards. No big deal. So one of the bummers or like bad things about playing uh, Ad Nauseum is that I'm going to have to answer a bunch of questions where people say like, do we want to play Angel's Grace? No, it doesn't work with the rest of your deck. Uh, Ad Nauseum is just a one of You don't want to play cards like that. Interesting. I actually didn't hit a twiddle on that. Perhaps I should have looked. Um, I didn't even notice. I should have flipped. So I can play Wishclaw. Yeah, we're still fine here. All right, land for turn. Play Wishclaw Talisman. Oh no, I'm wrong. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm wrong here. I was thinking that I could still activate for Twiddle, but I can't Grape Shot for Lethal if I do that. Hmm. Well, I guess I could consider into the Twiddle. Perhaps I should have uh, done that first. <laughs> okay. Um. I guess we bobble ourselves here. And there's the twiddle. So this is actually going to do it. 
play poorly and get rewarded. Yeah, that that was not me playing well, but doesn't matter. Had it the whole time. Alright, so now let's add a blue. And then use Wish Claw. Go get another Twiddle effect. Twiddle the Underworld Breach. And you're, you might be wondering why I had to have two Twiddles to do this. Because if you just Twiddled the Lotus Field once, you can play Underworld Breach, but then you don't have any more mana to Twiddle. So that's the reason why. Okay. One thing that I like about this uh, build of the deck is it feels a little bit more stormy. Like, it doesn't actually matter at all. But I do enjoy the fact that it plays a little bit more like Storm and you don't have to do the Tome Scour thing every single time you want to win the game. All right, so now let's tap for red. Actually, I want to get some info out of them. What's Inquisition here? Yeah, this just looks like standard reanimator. Okay, let's Inquisition again. Take the Persist, I guess. And now we can twiddle. Sure thing. Up to storm 15. Um, let's bobble them, I suppose, if they're just going to sit here. Another priest. Okay. And let's tap for red. And then we can just double grape shot. Let's kill the Teferi to send a message. We're, we're the ones in charge here. All right, so you might be wondering, like, would it have been easier for me to cast five more spells into the grape shot? Perhaps, but this is what I decided to do because I wanted grape shots, and uh, that's what I'm going to get. Boom. Ad nauseum in the first game. Love to see it. Opponent letting each copy resolve individually. Yes. All right, so we took game one over Esper Reanimator. I do wonder if I want to bring in more of these Void Snare type effects. Uh, I don't think we actually want the Ley Lines unless they're on like the Grief builds. And I feel like Pact Negation is a little bit of a trap here. Like we want one, but we definitely don't want to decide in anything else. So if anything, I think we want to bring in Bounce Spells. Probably board in like one Echoing Truth and take out a Consider. You could board in an in Ave to beat them. I just don't know if that's really what we want to be doing. I think I'm just going to resubmit. Side in the Echoing Truth and call it a day. So if we draw lane number two, this is like a deterministic turn four. All right. It's not a perfect hand, but it has potential. There's Leyline. So now we're switching to Ad Nauseum. Or just drawing a bounce spell. Like that. Okay. Inquisition. Oh, so they are the Grief Belt. Good to know. So that means if there is a game three, I will be boarding in the ley line as hang today's. I thought maybe due to them having that smaller creature that they were just on the bigger build. Uh, because there are like two different builds of reanimator. And we ripped the land, so that was good. Going to sus uh, suspend the profane tutor here. And pass. Okay, so if they draw a black card, I imagine there's going to be a grief in our future. The fairy. Um, they have three cards. That comes off suspend, draw. So I could bounce the Teferi. I just don't think that's really what we want to do. Yeah, Teferi was definitely a really good draw there. Or to deny that. I think we just play Wishclaw and pass. Okay. And now they have four lands so they can hard cast the grief. It's worth noting, even if I had Leyline, they would have to ferried the Leyline. And hard cast grief. 
Yeah, I don't think we're winning this one. Okay, so they took the Echoing Truth. And this Profane Tutor gets stuck in Exile. Draw. Play the Wish Claw. And pass the turn. So if I draw a Lotus Field, I can use Wish Claw Talisman to go get... Um, the Void Snare, and then we just win the game. So we're not out of this yet. It's just we're not in a good spot. Discarded Solitude. And here we take three going down to 13. Teferi goes up to three counters. So next turn they can bounce the Wish Claw. Um, I don't want to use the Grape Shot for sure. Yeah, I just have to pass. Unmarked Grave. Arcana of Cruelty, okay. Pluses to Fairy. Flashback Faithful Mending. Sears Emissary and a Leyline of the Void. And they choose Archon. Okay. So let's discard the Profane Tutor. We don't need that. We go down to 10. So we're actually facing down lethal damage next turn. So I pretty much have to draw my answer here or be dead. Okay. Draw. Bobble's not going to do it. Uh, sure. Yeah, they got me. So game three coming up. I'm going to take a minute and look up these uh, reanimator decks to see if they have any flicker effects. Because if they don't, I wonder if we're even supposed to board in the Ley Lines. So they do have four Ephemerate. So I think that's probably a good enough reason to side in Ley Line. And if we're setting in Ley Line, we need to take out Ad Nauseam and board in Ave. So now we're bringing in six cards. We have to make some cuts. I think you take out the Considers, take out the Pact and Negation, and now we're two cards away. Um, and actually, I wonder if I should just take out the Inquisitions. I guess they do hit to fairy. I'm fine with this. Let's submit. Okay, game number three on the play. Doesn't have ley line. I think I'm going to try this. I think that this is fine enough. Okay, let's bobble ourselves. Inquisition. I'm going to fetch that away. All right, so now we draw a card. Did not need land number four. Thoughtseize. Getting punished for this keep already. Maybe I should have mulliganed this. I don't know. Takes the dream's grip. Draw. Okay, so now we're really just like a Lotus Field away. Flooded Strand. Hallowed Fountain into Unmarked Grave. Arcana of Cruelty, draw. Another Ave. Pass the turn. No need to cast the Tome Scour quite yet. And there it is. So we discard Ave, and we need to hit a, something good soon, or else we're dead. Probably my own fault for keeping this hand. Grief. That's backbreaking. All right, so we're going to lose our Underworld Breach here. Yikes. There's Lotus Field. We needed that. We also need the Underworld Breach, though. I think we just pass. We have three Underworld Breach in the deck. I'm not loving our odds here. And Teferi, which doesn't matter. Draw. Wow, we hit. Oh, wow. I do not deserve this win. I can't believe we actually hit on that. I am so lucky. I played so poorly, and I just drew the best card of my deck. Sorry, opponent. 
Sometimes your opponent plays like trash and they just beat you anyway. All right, so Tome Scour. One thing I'd like to point out, yes, I got lucky and I drew under World Breach. I'm aware of this. I'm not going to pretend that it was skill, but we did put four under World Breach in our deck instead of three. We don't have Wish in our deck and we were rewarded for it. We just milled the Grape Shot, untap the Lotus Field. Tome Scour, remove Echoing Truth, and some other cards. Storm 7. At this point, we're just going through the motions. I just have to build up to Lethal Storm. Twiddle on the Lotus Field. Whoops. Don't want to remove that. Yeah, so Grape Shot. Grape Shot would be 10 11, which would be Lethal. Um, just to play around some card that probably doesn't exist, I'm going to Tome Scour Loop one more time. Twiddle. Okay, and now we can just double Grape Shot. We are so lucky. I can't believe I drew the Grape Shot. Like, I played this game so poorly. Yeah, I mean, that's good. It carried me. And then group shot again from 13. So I technically have enough to kill the Teferi 2, but I'm afraid that I'm going to like misclick and then not actually have the win. So I'm just going to target them with all the copies. Look at us. We are 1-0 even though we don't deserve it. I'll see you in match number two. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Welcome to match two. On the draw, I'm going to keep this. This hand seems great. Teleria West. So probably Amulet Titan. Another Wish Claw. This hand might be a little bit slow against Titan, but we'll see what we can do. Oh, it's definitely Titan. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm just going to cast this Otherworldly Gaze, digging for Twiddle or Lotus Field, whatever. All of these can go to the graveyard. So next turn we play Wishclaw Talisman. Ooh, Grip was good. All right, Talisman, pass. All right, Urza Saga. So now they can play Dryad or Azusa. Dryad, okay. We know that they still have a Teleria West in hand. Plays Besaju. Okay. So they can use Besaju next turn. We blow up an Underworld Breach, which is kind of a problem. Which is another reason to run Ad Nauseum. Okay. Draw. Hope we hit. Profane Tutor is not it. Um, what to do? So I could play out a Wish Claw Talisman. Theoretically, it could be destroyed as well. I don't want to give them Wishclaw Talisman because then they can just go get an amulet. And uh, I feel like that's going to end poorly for me. So I don't really want to do that. So I could just cast Consider hoping to hit a land into Wishclaw Talisman, which would actually help quite a bit. Uh, but if we miss, it's pretty embarrassing. The reason I didn't cast Otherworldly Gaze in our upkeep was that if I drew a Twiddle, we could win this turn, but unfortunately I did not. My fear with casting considers that we end up in the same place next turn. But I think I'm supposed to, just so that way, in case I hit, I can definitely win next turn. I, I don't want that. Garbage. All right. So I don't feel super confident anymore. Saga goes up to two. 
We know that they still have a Trillaria West in hand and Buseju. Ooh, Amulet. They played the Buseju. Untaps. So now they have six mana for Titan. Yeah, I might just be dead here. Because the Dryad attacks were two. My hand just wasn't very good in the matchup, unfortunately. I'm just going to hit the F6 key and let them do their thing. So now they can use the Slayer Stronghold. Attack for... They didn't attack with the Dryad. They just missed two damage. It might not matter. Yeah, it just doesn't matter. Um, so now they get the two Val Cuts and they deal me 12. All right, so I guess what really mattered was that I drew Profane Tutor for a turn instead of like a Twiddle or a Lotus Field. Next turn, we would have drawn a Dream Script and that could have done it. All right, so it happens. I do like Echoing Truth here. I think you want Pact Negations for like Force of Vigor and Endurance. So I do like those. I feel like Void Snare might be a little bit too slow. I don't... Inquisition's fine, but it doesn't stop Force, uh, under, force of Vigor. So I think we board up on packs. Technically, Leyline does stop uh, Endurance and Valakut. But one of the things about Valakut, or their whole turn, is that they might be able to tutor for Besaju, bounce it, blow up the Leyline, and then attack. So it might not even be that good. Let's bring uh, Goldfish back up. Amulet Titan. Four Endurance. Three Force of Vigor. They have their Crumbling Vestige. Hmm. I don't think I want it. Plus it makes Ad Nauseam worse. And I do think Ad Nauseam is pretty good in this matchup. All right, I think I'm just going to try this out. All right, on the play for game number two versus Amulet Titan. Yes. All right, Pluto Delta, Bobble, target myself. We're going to fetch that away. Grab our island, play Bobble. And let's just Bobble them, why not? So I wanted to draw two cards because if I draw Consider or Otherworldly Gaze, I can cast it. So I don't want to wait. Like, I don't benefit from waiting. All right. So another Twiddle. Cool. But we did not need land number five. Getting a little bit nervous now. So our best draw is definitely Ad Nauseam. Razor into Saga. Wow, what a turn. Okay. Draw. Another dream script. Pass the turn. Saga goes up to two. Boreal Grazer again. Roll turf. Likely picking up the cavern. Yep. So they still have a land drop. Okay. So we're going to go get a black source here. Need to draw an action spell. Draw. I mean, it's technically an action spell, but it doesn't win us the game. So I think I'm just going to play a land and pass here. I can twiddle a Titan to buy time. I think that's just what we need to do. So chapter three happens. They go to get to search for Amulet of Vigor. All right. You have a cavern. Dryad. Do you not have Titan? Two cards in hand. Interesting. All right, let's fetch to thin going down to 17. Might as well grab the steam vents. 
draw. Let's cast Consider. We technically have the win right now. Um, my fear is that they have Endurance or Titan, and I can't actually beat the Endurance at the moment. Well, I, I guess I could beat the Endurance, actually, but I can't beat Force of Vigor. All right, so let's float blue. Play the Lotus Field. Twiddle. All right, so we have four mana, six mana, eight mana, which is enough to cast Ad Nauseam exactly, but that doesn't actually help me. Um, so I don't think we're supposed to do that. Let's play Underworld Breach. No Endurance, that's a good sign. Let's twiddle. Okay. And part of me wonders if we should Ad Nauseam. Because if our opponent has a, like an endurance later, or I don't know, um, like a Besaju they're sitting on, they could get me if I go get the Tome Scour, where it almost feels pretty free to just like cast the Adnaz. Now let's escape again. Yes. And Dream Script to untap. Bushclaw Talisman. Activate the Talisman. Go get Ad Nauseam. And I could go get Tome Scour here. I'm just trying to play around something that would destroy my Breach or Graveyard Hate. All right, so we started off by revealing a few Breaches. Found a four. Keep flipping. I'll pop this out so everyone can see. We'll stop it too. All right, so it's pretty free to twiddle here. Let's do that. Consider. That can go to the graveyard. Drew another twiddle, lovely. Untap. We can just double grape shot here. Good deal. I do like one thing about this list is that you you don't have to be a graveyard deck. Like, yes, we are using dream scripts and whatnot from our graveyard with Underworld Breach, but we could win with our Breach being destroyed. And I think that was pretty interesting because previously, if your opponent had Endurance or Force of Vigor, you just lost. And here we got to cast Ad Nauseam, which is just an avenue that we didn't have before that allowed me to dodge potential hate. I'm just going to click submit. Something that I think would be pretty interesting is that we could look at Plague and Needle on our sideboard to name Besaju if Besaju ends up seeing a lot of play because you could Profane Tutor for it or Wishclaw and then shut off Besaju, which is just really interesting. So that might be something worth playing in the sideboard as a Pithing Needle. Okay, so we have Lotus Field. We have the Profane Tutors, which are kind of slow in this matchup. Um, we have Otherworldly Gaze to find land two. I think we keep this. The opponent takes a mulligan to six. All right, Valakut. Draw. Another Gaze. So we have six looks at land two. Roll turf, sure. Fetch. And I think I'm going to shock myself here because I want the black mana for Profane Tutor and I don't want to risk it. And that was powerful. Um, I think these are better in the graveyard. And I'm going to have to shuffle them away so like it's pretty free to put them there. And we keep the land on top. Draw. Okay. Suspend. Three mana. It's probably like a dryad, yeah. We know that they have a Val cut. So what I'm wondering is if I should actually just like bounce this dryad here to buy time. Draw. 
So we know that they have Val cut in hand. All right, I'm just going to set up. I don't think I need to keep my guard up right now. Let's mill the land. All right, then gaze. I think I actually want to keep the island here. Oh, it doesn't matter because it's coming off suspend. I just talked about this. So we might as well mill that. And then play Lotus Field. That was a mistake on my part. Because we have the Profane Tutor coming off suspend. So next turn I have to get a Twiddle. And then we need to use Otherworldly Gaze to essentially just buy time. Uh, well, not buy time. Dig to find the Tome Scour. By time was not the correct thing that I was trying to say. So it looks like they're transmuting. Jukabog. Okay. One green and pool. Bell cut. So now we go to 14 and we have the profane tutor coming off suspend, but it doesn't actually do me a whole lot of good here. Um if I just go get the Scour, we actually have a win as long as I draw a Twiddle. We have six Twiddles in our deck. So we're going to cast Profane Tutor. So I wonder if I'm supposed to just go get the Tome Scour and then pray to Spike uh, Twiddle. And I think that's probably the play. Draw. Going to pass the turn. So I can hold up Echoing Truth and then use Otherworldly Gaze to help find what I'm looking for. The opponent has six lands. If they have Titan, they can cast it. All right, I'm going to take the damage here. Okay. Going to eight. So they can activate. So I go to six. I don't know if they can kill me. All right, so now I'm going to gaze flashback gaze, I think. Yeah, that was bad. All right, so mill those and then other really gaze again. Okay, keep the dream script on top. They have two cards. It really just depends on what they are, right? Untap. Underworld Breach. So that resolved. Okay. Let's untap the Lotus Field. I'm trying to figure out what this is. Force of Vigor. All right. I'm going to Pact Negation that. Dream Grip. All right. Trump Scour. And that resolved. Woot woot. But scour. They have to have something, right? Like, what do they have? Or they're not, or they're like, they're posturing a lot. And I'm trying to figure out what the posture is for. Okay. Scour again. All right, I'm going to twiddle. I want to keep my mana open for the Echoing Truth because I could always Echoing Truth the Breach if they try to destroy it. Pop this over here. And now we Tome Scour again. Maybe I don't want to remove a Pact. Remove one of these extra twiddles, maybe. I think their last card in hand like has to be an Endurance. Is it another Vigor? Um, I mean, do I just bounce it? Like, I don't know if I actually care about that. So let's think about this. So I Echoing Truth, Replay, Breach, I'd have one mana floating. And then I'd have to Twiddle. This should work. All right, so you had double Force of Vigor. Now the Tome Scar resolves. We hit the Grape Shot. It's from 14. My opponent uh, is acknowledging their misplay. 
So, and I, I don't think that they're wrong. So the opponent said that they should have responded to the pact with the second force of vigor. And I do agree. That would have been the time to do it. Uh, I don't remember if I could have responded with Echoing Truth at the time, but I do agree that's that would have been the proper line. All right, Storm 16. Storm 17. And now we twiddle. Storm 18. Yes. Storm 19. Okay. And now Storm 20 Grape Shot. Woot woot. 2 0 with Lurus. Well, my bad. No Lurus Breach. I'm so used to saying Lurus Lotus Breach. It's like built into me now. But here we are. No Lurus. Still breaching. Still winning. We're now 2 0. Woot woot. Love to see it. All right. And I will see you in match number three. Playing your favorite combo deck in paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm Mini Token Pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for Grape Shot everyone's favorite stormwind condition a galvanic relay exile indicator four treasure tokens for strike it rich and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends it also has slime time live eighth progenitor ooze tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier no fumbling around with dice we've got you covered make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern and then squirrels versus goblins chatterstorm versus empty the warrens the battle of the ages you definitely need 20 squirrel tokens and 20 goblin tokens you're gonna love this mini token pack i promise and once again you can grab that at the epicstorm.com slash shop all right it's time for the third match we're on the draw and i'm going to keep this we do have the combination of otherworldly gaze plus mishra's bobble to potentially find our Lotus Field, and I like the disruption we have between Inquisition and Pact. Okay, not really sure what our opponent's playing quite yet. This Pact likely is not going to be very good in holy moly Lotus Field. All right, let's bobble to get the most information possible. Target them. Seismic Assault, so it's a spicy one. All right, let's play this uh, Watery Grave. And Inquisition. They already have a Seismic Assault, okay. Uh, Lightning Bolt, not very good here. Ragavan, Ragavan is pretty good. So I think we're going to take the Ragavan. Pass the turn. They draw a second Seismic Assault, we draw Consider. They play the second Hierarch and we take two damage here. They have three red cards left in hand. Upkeep, I think we're going to cast this Otherworldly Gaze. We can mill all of these. Draw. hi -o. I think I'm just going to cast Consider. Uh, you don't need to do it on your main phase like I'm going to, but I just don't want to, you know, waste time. Bre or Misty, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to mill this because we need to find a twiddle effect. Blood Braid off. That was a good draw. Run in six. So we're going to take five here down to 10. They get back the land. I think they're representing lethal now. So they get to bolt me. Puts me to seven. Do we just go from like being in a terrific spot to possibly losing? I need to think through this. Um, so if I bounce the blood braid, they can't play the seismic assault next turn but if they cascade into something good i'm dead i think i just have to take a draw here that's a draw so we don't have the scour or the um the tome scour yet but i still think we're probably supposed to try to win here all right so we're going to untap 
And now we play Underworld Breach. We have Consider and Otherworldly Gaze to find Home Scour. 12 cards. Untap the Lotus Field. All right, and then Consider. We can mill that. Another Twiddle is good. Yes. I think we should cast Otherworldly Gaze for the escape cost. And what's nice is when you're in this position, it's just essentially mill three, which helps us a lot. And I think the Mishra's Bobble, or the, uh, the Witch Claw Talisman does it here. So it's better to mill all three than it is to leave any number on top when you have Underworld Breach in play. So I think we just found our deterministic win. Okay, so now we untap the Lotus Field. It's also possible that it's correct to just get Grape Shot here, but I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. All right, so let's play Wish Claw. Bobble, Bobble, Breach. Why not? Yeah, I don't think we're actually allowed to get uh, Grape Shot here. But I can just get the Tome Scour. Target us. One blue floating. So then my next spell has to be a Twiddle. All right, untap the Lotus Field. And it's deterministic. We just have to go through the motions now. Scour, remove the ad nauseum, bobble, other worldly gaze. Storm 11. Scour again, storm 12. This was a sweet one. Dream script to untap. Storm 13. From Scour. Now we're just looking for the Grape Shot. Okay. Now I need to Twiddle again. Storm 16. Yes, I would like to untap. Tom Scour. 12 cards left in Library. Storm 17. Okay. Twiddle. It's the bottom two. <laughs> All right. So we can escape these. Yes. And then I think it's just better to actually uh, flash back. Did I remove all of them? Oh, I did. Uh, I guess I could cast Consider. It's guaranteed to find it. It's the same as Scour without the ability of me to mess up, I suppose. All right, Storm 20. And there's our Grape Shot. Target them. Storm 21. Love it. So it's worth noting that they had a Ketria Trium here, but an Ignoble Hierarch. So I'm not sure if they're playing blue or i mean they're probably away from the loam deck if i had a guess uh it's tough to say we could board in eve here against the aggressive deck uh over the ad nauseum which i don't hate so we could just do like double ave take out the inquisitions void snare echoing truth and like the explosives Keeping around one pack for something like Endurance. I think I like this. Game two, we're on the draw. I'm going to keep this. Our opponent's already taken a mulligan. No Leyline of the Void. Stomping ground. Eric, sure. Draw. Grape shot. Everyone's favorite. So we have two awkward one-ups in our hand. We don't really want to open hand the Pact of Negation, and we didn't want to see Grape Shot this early. Run in six, sure. Getting back the Windswept Teeth, four cards. 
So if you wanted to, you could try to kill the Hierarch on your turn instead of suspending Wishclaw. I don't think that's really what we want to be doing. Cast Consider. I think we keep that. Draw. And now we just uh, suspend one tutor here. And then on turn three, we play Wishclaw. On turn four, we just have a win backed by Pact and Negation. Lightning Bolt. Yep. There's the Heath we knew about. Three cards left in hand. Getting back the Windswept Heath. Bloodbraid Elf. Yep. Into Lightning Bolt. So we go to 10 and then 7. I'm sorry, 10 and then 6. So they can put me to 1 next turn. I could just be dead. I mean, I think I have to hold up a twiddle here. So I'm thinking. Um, I could play out Wishclaw and then hold up twiddle off Steam Vents, and that would put me to four. I could twiddle the Blood Braid. I think the real answer is that I just don't play anything and I just pass. And then I can uh, tap the Blood Braid Elf. All right, so they're going to 14, 13, dash Ragavan, sure. We're going to tap the Bloodbraid Elf. And I'm, I know that it seems weird, but it's less damage, and I don't know why, but that's what I'm afraid of here. So I'm gonna go to three, and then Ren can put me to two. I don't care about that. And there's a lightning bolt. So it's just dead no matter what. All right, they got me. Next game. I wonder if I want Fatal Push here just to slow them down instead of this explosives. They don't seem like an Endurance Force of Vigor deck. I think I'm just going to try double Fatal Plush instead. Game three against Red Green. Good hand, keep. This makes a lot of slimes on turn four. Strand past the turn. So this is also a hand where we can just fetch for basics and not have to worry about uh, shocking myself. Okay. We have Island and Otherworldly Gaze. I mean, those are also pretty good. Let's keep the Breach. Draw. We're going to 18, grab the Swamp. Suspend, pass the turn. Stomping Ground. Alpine Moon. So we do have that Profane Tutor on Suspend that can get a Bounce Spell. So I'm not super worried about that. You can also play Lotus Field uh, without sacrificing lands now, which is kind of nice. Ignoble Hierarch, sure. Okay, so let's let this ability resolve. And then let's uh, Otherworldly Gaze so we can dig. Let's just mill all of these. Draw. Beautiful. Um, we just passed the turn. Opponent has five cards. Hierarch, sure. I think one of the biggest things about this deck list uh, compared to previous lists is that... Oh my, Chalice on one. Uh, we have Echoing Truth. We could still do this. It's just more difficult now. Is that you're able to beat more hate like this. We're fine. I can still win this. So it's interesting that they didn't chalice on zero, knowing that I have Profane Tutor coming off Suspend. But we get uh, the Echoing Truth now. Let's cast this. We have it in here somewhere if I can find it. There it is. All right, and then take a draw. 
and I can't win this turn. There's a Chalice for one in play, but on their end step, I can bounce Chalice, untap, bounce the Alpine Moon, and just do my thing. Three cards left in the opponent's hand. Well, they are playing blue for something. What is this? All right, so it's called Slow Gurk, the Over Slime for one, a green and a blue, so three mana total for a three, three legendary ooze. Trample, whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, put a one, one counter on this creature, remove three counters, return it to its owner's hand. When it leaves the battlefield, return up to three land cards from your graveyard to your hand. So it's like a weird life from the loam creature. And Quathis. So I believe we get to win the game now. All right, so we're going to Echoing Truth this Chalice of the Void. Okay, draw. Might as well fetch. Bounce the Alpine Moon. Untap the Lotus Field. Red. Play Underworld Breach. Escape the Wishclaw Talisman. Untap the Lotus Field. Trying to eat up as much as my graveyard as I can, and just in case there's something like Endurance. I mean, we know that it can't be, right? Um, I don't know, Ravenous Trap? Uh, like, there could be, like, some weird card that they have. And it's just, like, pretty free to play cautiously. So we'll remove Land, the Otherworldly Gaze, and the Echoing Truth. Storm is six. They're at 13. So I can go... All right. Untap. And then hold priority. Untap the Wish Claw. Storm is eight. Tap the Wish Claw again. So we get to double tutor here. We'll grab Grape Shot. And scour, grape shot them, and then we can grape shot them again. And the reason I grab scour here, I was trying to think of like what could we possibly lose to, and surgical is the answer. Uh, so if the surgical dreams grip, we couldn't escape the grape shot the second time. So by getting thought scour, we play around that. All right, we are now 3-0. This is what I was talking about. By having eight Demonic Tutors in your deck, our opponent had double hate piece and it just didn't matter. You're so consistent at beating hate now that it's crazy. And that's what Wish Plus Profane Tutor does. Two matches left to go. I'm feeling confident. I hope you are. And I will see you in match number four. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a Card Hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your Card Hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Match 4, we're on the play this time. And... Unkeepable. Unfortunately, we have to ship this. Okay, so here we have a way of going to go get Lotus Field. We have the Ad Nauseum. Maybe we try this. Bottom a bobble. Our opponent's also taking a mulligan. So I think it's pretty free here to bobble ourselves first, get a little bit of information. Gaze. Um... I think I'm fine with drawing the gaze. So I want to play this watery grave tap so that way I can save a little bit of damage for the ad nauseum. On turn two, we can suspend profane tutor without shocking. And then on turn three, we can cast this other worldly gaze. Flooded strand. Plane, so hammer time. Yep. Draw. All right. Suspend the profane tutor. Our goal is not to die. I know, it's a crazy one. Make Moth Nexus. Yikes, we might be dying. Four cards in hand. 
and they're playing the Colossus Hammer. So that's going to shut off her ad nauseum. Weird, not in great shape here. They had one of their best draws, and uh, it did not align well with what we were trying to do. Um, so I have to twiddle the Sentinel. The Lotus Field was a good draw. I'm just trying to figure out if we can still possibly win this. And I can't cast this Gaze because we have the Profane coming off Suspend. So I guess I could. I could just mill three, uh, and that would help for a Breach one, I suppose. And now we just tap the Esper Sentinel. They get to draw a card. Steel Shaper's Gift. Drum. All right, so I think I do want to play this other Worldly Gaze with the Steam Vents. Gaze. And I might as well mill the Dream Script because we're not going to draw it. All right, so now we can Profane Tutor. Cast this. So I just want to think about this a little bit. So I can get Underworld Breach. And if I get Underworld Breach, I can cast it, play Lotus Field, Dream's Grip. Hold on. Uh, I just realized something. So I want to talk through this. So this is going to go to the graveyard. That's number 810. This might work. And then use Ad Nauseam to dig. All right. Draw. Honestly, that's not the worst either. That's a free... It helps for Delve. Or not Delva, Escape, I mean. So now we sacrifice these, play the Bobble, target them. All right, and now we Dream Script, untap the Lotus Field, Dream Script again, untap, Bobble. So I could Otherworldly Gaze here, but I think it's just best to Dream Script into Ad Nauseam. Bobble, Gaze, Delta, Black Mana. So I could keep the Black Mana open for Wishclaw Talisman, and I think that might be the right thing to do here. Okay, Bobble, Pact. So that was a free draw seven. <laughs> uh, not very good. All right. So we really, really want to hit um, the Tome Scour. Whittle, that's good. Wish Claw, that might have done it. Still pretty free to keep flipping. All right. 14 cards we've drawn this turn. Gaze will stop there. Uh, I just want to make sure that it's actually correct to stop. So, before I stop, we've played a land, I believe. Let me check. Plays Lotus Field. Yep. Okay. So, I've played my land. I can twiddle the Lotus Field, going up to four mana, bobble, and then escape a twiddle. Think that does it? Yes. Oh, and I forgot about the ad nauseum going to graveyard too. Okay. Now escape. Yes. Wish claw. So we tap for blue. Go get the Tome Scour. Cast the Scour. All right, so now we've got it. Yes. Um, scour, 24 cards left. I'm just a little bit nervous I'm messing up and removing my Twiddles for some reason. Okay. 
down to 14 cards in deck. We need to untap now. Lotus Field, and then some Wishclaw Talismans, why not? Scour, Profane Tutor, Otherworldly Gaze, consider. Scour again. Exile these. And this one will mill the Grape Shot. Okay, and now we can untap into Grape Shot. Okay, red. Grape Shot you. Breach and some other cards. We did it. Cast ad nauseum even after taking a bonk from the hammer. That was sweet. Woot woot. So let me look at what goldfish has for hammer time. It looks like they just removed hammer because it had Luris in it. That's annoying. But it's way down here now. So we saw that they were on the blue list. The blue list has spell pierce, I knew that. Meddling Mage, Seal, Sanctifier, Needle Path. Okay. So I could keep in a Pact Negation for Spell Pierce, but I don't think that's the right thing to do. So I'm going to depart out this Pact. I think Echoing Truth is fine, Void Snare is fine, and so is EE. That brings us up to 65. And I think we just take out the Inquisitions. And then we're, now we're one card over. I don't think I want A versus them. I think I'm just going to set out a consider and try this. Let's go. The old triple profane tutor hand, huh? Well, I guess it's double. My bad. Uh, I think this just has to be a mulligan. We'll try this and bottom a twiddle effect. We do need land two. Turn one hollowed fountain. As for Sentinel, that's good for them. And there's our land. I'm just going to play the Delta in case I need to Fatal Punch something. Saga, yep. Memnite. That's a Cigar Disease. All right, I'm going to not shock myself here. I'm going to keep my life total up. Actually, I guess I... Could Fatal Push now, but that's not really what I want. Draw. And let's just pass the turn. Deal Shaper's Gift. That's a hammer. You got it. Let's push the Sentinel. I was never going to pay for the one da damage anyway, so, or the one mana anyway, so you might be thinking, Brian, you could have responded to the Sentinel and then paid the one. I was never going to do that, and I wanted to see if I could get them to Colossus Hammer again, because I was always going to cast this other Whirly Gaze on their end step. And it looks like they're strongly holding up the, uh, the Spell Pierce here. Gaze. Ad Nauseam. Okay, um, yeah, put that on top, draw, let's flash this back, so that's interesting because now we don't even need Dad Nauseam, we just have the win next turn, I'm going to leave that on top. And I'm going to pass the turn. So this way, I could have played Lotus Field there, but this way I get to decide if I need to tap something down, which I think is a little bit more valuable. They're going to make a construct? Okay. Interesting. I would have thought if they were going to do that, 
they would have um, gotten a Soul Guide Lantern if they're going to make a Construct. But here, I don't mind just taking it because I think we're going to win now, even through a Spell Pierce. Draw. Let's float some blue mana. Lotus Field. All right. Untap. Yes. Dream Script again. Red mana. Underworld Breach. All right. So the name of the game at this point is Don't Lose the Spell Piers. All right. Storms 4. Now we can Tome Scour. Storm 5. And our opponent conceded. Woot, woot. Oro about to play for the trophy with the new list for Lotus Breach. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. I'm having a blast. Let's get that trophy. It would make me so happy. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. For the trophy, match number five, we're on the draw. I'm going to keep this. So we already have a Lotus Field, we have two lands, we have a bunch of tutors in our hand. I think I like it. All right, so our opponent took a mulligan to six and they have turn one Inquisition. What do you even take here? The Bobble? I just don't know. Profane Tutor was their answer. Okay, draw. We can send one back at them. All right. Inqu uh, bobble and then we'll play the inquisition they have another inquisition on top so they're jund i think we just take their threat here all right so we know that they're drawing an inquisition ah uh, that's what we get for uh using bobble i suppose reach down okay so we know that they can't cast the Liliana Koi, yeah, we have to hope they don't draw land three. All right. Wish Claw pass. Fetching here actually reduces their odds of hitting for the Liliana. Another thought sees. Ah, oh, what a bummer. Okay. Draw. So we can hit their Liliana here. Leaving them with just the Blood Braid. Play the Lotus Field and pass the turn. It's worth noting, even if we drew um, Underworld Breach, we can't win yet. Like, I, we could like try to do something, but just not quite good enough. Might as well cast this Inquisition. It's not doing anything else. All right. Pass the turn. And there's land three. They can't play the Blood Braid quite yet. I'm going to thin our deck here going to 19 to get the red source. Draw. All right. So we have 10 cards. Let's think about this. So I can 100% cast Ad Nauseam here. Because um, we have four mana. This is six mana. So I, I could cast Ad Nauseam with the land drop. But I want to think about if we have a deterministic one first. So we go up to six mana. Down to five mana to go get Unreal Breach. And then we would need to escape Twiddle twice into Wish Claw. Do I have enough mana for all of that? All right, so let's do this one more time. Um, six mana, five mana, Unreal Breach down to three, double Twiddle into Wish Claw. I think that works. Yes. All right, activate Wish Claw. Go get Underworld Breach. Play the Breach. Twiddle. Yes. 
All right, and now we play the Worst Claw Talisman. Escape some cards. Twiddle. All right, untap the Lotus Field. Yes. And now we can use the black mana because we're not going to need that. And then we go get the Tome Scour and it's deterministic. Okay. Just going through the motions. Storm eight. Twiddle to untap Lotus Field. Done. And then click yes. At this point, I'm just trying really hard to not misclick. Tome Scour targeting us. Storm is 10. There's our ad nauseum, but we don't need that. Storm 11. We do need to untap. So we'll untap Lotus Field. 19 cards left in the library, and we're three Storm short. Okay, exile these. Twiddle, or I'm sorry, not Twiddle, uh, Tome Scour again. We're at the point where if we hit Grape Shot, we can win. But we have not. So we're going to Dream Script to untap the Lotus Field again. Grape Shot's just living on the bottom of our library in this league. Scour. We're going to remove the Pact of Negation. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, it's in the bottom four. There it is. Okay, so let's untap. And group shot. Target them. We got game number one. We have to get one of the next two for the trophy. All right, so Leyline of Sanctity is definitely a card I want here. I want the Ave Progenitor Ooze. We're going to ditch this Ad Nauseum, bring in the Bounce Spells, get rid of this Pact of Negation, goodbye Inquisition of Kozilak. Now we're two cards over. Um, I think we could probably just shave on Considers. I also wonder if like we want the EE. Just as many answers as possible here. Let's try it. No ley line. Um, they kept seven. I'm going to ship it. I could just blank their turn one discard spell by bottoming Wishclaw. I, I honestly, I think I kind of like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's Ragavan. Let's play the explosives. So Ragavan connects. Dreams grip. All right, let's move this over. Armagoyf, the aggro draw. Underworld breach. All right, so the goyf is going to grow to a three here. We fall to 15. No discard spells is kind of shocking. Another Ragavan. Renin 6. I'm just getting punished for bottoming that Wish Claw, trying to be cute. All right. Pass the turn. Taking 5, going down to 10. Void Snare. They might be holding up like Abrupt Decay for the Breach. And they're passing draw. Eve, you're not going to be good enough here. I'm sorry. I guess there's like some world where I draw Twiddle where I can stall them out. Is this a Lightning Bolt? K Command. So... It's six, seven off the run. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to stabilize here. And I'm not going to show them Ave. So we're going to go to game three. All right. That was a bummer. Just going to resubmit. 
Like, I don't think I was supposed to go to five just to look for a ley line of sanctity there, but maybe I should have kept the wish claw. I'm not sure. I mean, this hand's really good. It just doesn't have ley line. I think I keep it. Okay. Upkeep, let's bobble them. Inquisition. All right. Likely losing our wish claw here. And there it goes. All right. So we do have a bobble draw this turn. Well, our next turn. We don't need twiddles. Let's get rid of all of these. All right. So the bobble draw. Another gaze. I think we just take a draw here. Bummer. Okay, so we have to pass. Sure. It might be the twiddle. Void snare. That's not good. And another discard spell. I mean, I could have mulliganed to the ley line, but in game two, they kept a hand without discard spells. Interesting. They took otherworldly gaze. Just grab the swamp here. Flashback. So if I could rip. I think we just keep the breach. I was thinking about it. even if I drew a, uh, a lotus field next turn, I wouldn't have the mana to win because the swamp doesn't tap for blue. So we're two, two full turns away from winning. That hurts. They're about to have us on lockdown. Discard this Tome Scour. All right, we need to find Lotus Field immediately. There it is. And the Breach is perfect. We're going to hide those two on top. Just making sure. So I float blue, float black, Lotus Field, Twiddle. Yeah, it just doesn't do it. So I'm going to play field here. And now we have to hope our opponent doesn't have a discard spell. All right, so they're plussing Liliana. I'm going to discard the breach. Choke. Two cards left in our opponent's hand. Ah. Oh. It's backbreaking. We had the game. So I think now what I'm supposed to do, because I'd have to discard this to the Liliana, is we just use Breach plus Bobble. We were so close. So we get to draw like four cards here. Bobble them. They have a land coming. Play Bobble again. We can't remove the Tome Scour. Bobble. All right. I mean, maybe we do. Maybe we just give up on the breach plan. I'm not sure. But we had it if they didn't K command us. All right. And now we bobble one more time. I don't have enough to bobble twice. Yeah, I'm just short of one more bobble. Okay, so I think we're drawing three cards off the bobbles and then I get one more off this one. We draw three. Of course it's lands. Ah. Oh. Yep. So I think our best draw is ripping another Underworld Breach. We only have two left. We had a Lotus Field. We didn't want that anyway. So Lily goes up to six. Bobble them. Torok. Jeez. Okay. They can definitely kick that next turn too. We we'll draw off Bobble. Come on, please give me a Breach. Breach. It's frustrating. I don't even know if I have a line to thin. Yeah, we have watery graves left. 
I'm going to lose all three of these cards because they're going to kick the uh, the Torak plus the Liliana. All right, so we lose those. Come on, deck, please give me Underworld Breach. I know we only have two of them, but I would really appreciate it. All right, come on, please. Have to pass. I think we're probably dead here. Playing Ragavan and not dashing. A weird choice. All right, so Lily gets bigger. Ooh, I should have responded. Ah, oh, I didn't even think of that. Because the Torak got bigger, if I just cast the Twiddle, this wouldn't have gotten any larger. That's a mistake on my part. Um, if I take five, you're going to nine. And they get to bring back Croxa. So does that make a difference? No, it does make a difference in our clock. So I just have to rip here. I have to draw exactly under World Breach, I think. Draw. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh, that's a bummer. We never saw Leyline in either post board game. Ah, oh, geez. Tap the Crocs. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. We're dead here. We had some draws. We just missed on them. Like, we could have drawn a Wish Claw the last few turns as well, and that would have done it. But instead, we finished 4-1. Uh, I'm not upset with a 4-1. This was a really good league. We almost got the trophy. We just fell up short, or came up short. I love this deck list. I don't plan on changing anything about it. So if that's your question, no changes here. I would run this back immediately. I loved this deck list. Let me know what you think. I realized I didn't play this league perfectly. Stuff happens. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Cheers. Have a great day and keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.